If you've ever used one of the major front end frameworks like Angular, React, or Vue, they all come pre configured with something called Webpack to do builds and bundles of your application. But what do you do if you're using vanilla JavaScript? In this video, I'll show you how to easily set up Parcel with no configuration needed to add bundling to your vanilla JavaScript application. As always, if you enjoyed the video, subscribe to the channel, like the video, and then turn on the notification bell so you can get notifications for content as it comes out. All right, so what we're gonna talk about today is Parcel, and they advertise themselves as being a blazing fast, zero configuration web application bundler. Now, the big benefit about Parcel, uh, fast is definitely one of the benefits, probably the biggest for me is in comparison to Webpack, it's much easier to get started with. I've done a little bit of working with Webpack. You can look into that in a second if you want to. It's pre-configured inside of Angular, React, and Vue if you go that route. Um, it's just kind of a pain to set up. There's a lot of diff different configurations. You have to do your research to figure out how to tie different things in. Parcel advertises itself as zero configuration, uh, which is actually really nice and works really well, which you'll see in a second. Now, one of the things we're going to look at is how I incorporated Parcel into an application that I've been building on Twitch. If you're interested in following some of my live streams, you can find me at twitch.tv slash jamesqquick, and you can follow along with some of the live streams as I build stuff similar to what we're doing today. And again, doing a project on Twitch to incorporate Parcel is what influenced this video. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to click on the get starting documentation here. And as I do this, I'm just gonna start off with a couple of, one simple example, and then I'll tie in Parcel into that uh, typing game is what we built in the Twitch stream. So I've got an extension here called uh, the Web Boilerplate extension, and I can use a command to create these three files, an app CSS, app JS, and index.html. That's all I really need at this point. And if we look inside of here, uh, we can just rename the title to Parcel Demo. And notice that this um, this grab or imports the app.js script, and then I can add an h1 in here to say parcel demo. Now, obviously, this is not going to be very pretty. If I were to work on this, what I would do is I would right-click in here and use something called the live server extension, and I've got a video on that you can check out on YouTube to see how to set this up and get going with it. So that's what I would do for a uh, basic vanilla JavaScript application. So I'd right click in here after having the extension installed and say open with live server. This will open up a page in my browser that is a live reloading server as you would probably expect. And then I would do my development and I would go and work there. Now what we want to get to is inside of our app.js. What if we were able to use the ES6 import syntax to split out our code into different files so that we can organize them a little bit better. So let's um, let's create a new file and uh, we'll just call this test.js. Again, this is just a demo to show you how this works. Let's create a hello world function. So hello world. And it's just going to return hello world, for example. All right, obviously this is not super, super in depth, but we've got this function here, hello world. In ES6 uh, import and export syntax, I want to now export this function from my file. So I can export this function now. In theory, I could come into my app.js and I could import uh, hello world, hello world from test.js. And then I could console log by calling the hello world function. And that should print it out to the console. But if we scroll over and open up the console, we'll see we get an error. So by default, unta unknown syntax cannot use import statement outside of a module. So by default, vanilla JavaScript applications are not prepared to handle the ES6 import and export syntax. So this is where parcel comes in. And the way we're gonna get started with this, one thing we're gonna do is go ahead and initialize this project as a JavaScript project or an NPM project by running NPM init. So we'll run that. I'm just gonna keep all the defaults here, just pre pressing enter all the way through. And then yes, at the very end. So what this does is it creates a package.json and this thing includes metadata about our application as well as dependencies, which we'll see in a second. And so now let's go back to the getting started with parcel. And I'm gonna scroll down here to include parcel inside of your project. 
So you can use yarn or parcel, just installing a dependency. And what we're doing, I'm gonna copy this into my terminal. This is gonna install the parcel bundler as a dev dependency for our project. We'll see that come through here in a second. Now, once this finish, finishes, we'll see a node modules folder and it, it's the folder that contains all of our NPM uh, JavaScript libraries that we pull in. And then inside of the package.json file, we'll see a change here to list out the new dependency. Okay, so that just finished up. Notice I've got dev dependencies. It's got the parcel bundler inside of it. And then I've got my node modules folder on the uh, left-hand side. So that worked. So now we need to do two things or add two things into the script section of our package.json file. And if you scroll down, you can actually see what those things are. So inside of the parcel documentation, I'm gonna grab these two, two commands, a dev and a build, and let's paste them and replace the test command in here. And then we wanna give it the entry file. Well, the entry file is gonna be my index HTML. And so what this does is it will look in the index HTML file. It will see that app.js references or is it's referencing the app.js file. Inside of the app.js file, it sees that this is importing from another JavaScript file. So it'll go and bring that file in. So the benefit, the beauty of Parcel and Webpack, what well, Parcel being much simpler and zero configuration, is that it will basically go out through all the different dependencies that your JavaScript has, and it will import all of those things, and it will minify and bundle all those things together. So we should see that uh, this will work here in a second. What I need to do is kill the live server. I don't want to run live server anymore, so there's a little button down here that I can kill it. And now... I can run the npm run dev. Now again, this is going to run the parcel index.html file, which looks at index.html. It sees it references the app.js, which then references the test.js, and it brings all those dependencies in and then bundles them. And it actually will run this with a live reloading server at localhost 1234. Okay, so that says built. Let's scroll over and open up, not this tab, but localhost 1234. And now we should see the application and we see our hello world. So we're able to prove that by adding parcel, again, zero configuration, uh, we're able to see this log come in, which is through an import to another JavaScript file. Now, if that seems too easy, and I don't like doing uh, YouTube videos just on a demo that is that simple, let's dive into the application that I mentioned earlier, which is the typing game, and let's add parcel to it to make sure that you see that you can embed it in any kind of vanilla JavaScript application. So I'm going to, uh, I'll just leave that tab there. I'm going to kill this and I'll explain more about parcel in this next one. We'll get a little bit deeper into parcel works, but that's the basics. So inside of this new instance of VS code, I've got the uh, build a typing game project. And what I want to do, let's just open this up. So same thing, right click and open with live server. I just want to show you what it looks like. All right. So you start playing here, you can type in a letter and you get score based on uh, based on typing in the right letter. Okay, so that works. So that that web that web page works. What I want to do is take the, all of this JavaScript and use Parcel so that I can start to split out some of this JavaScript into its own files. Because this is just a lot of JavaScript in one file, and it's hard to read and it's hard to follow. And you can start to use Parcel to break this stuff out. So first thing we want to do, let's. Uh, I'm going to make sure that we start from scratch on here with no package.json or package lock. So let me get rid of both of those files and we'll go through that same process as well as the node modules, the disk directory, and the cache. So we've gotten rid of all of that stuff. Now I wanna do an npm init. So this is the same thing that we did uh, with the previous one. We'll go through the defaults here. Yes, 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 looks good. It's gonna now add that package.json. I'll come back over to the parcel documentation here. All right, so let's grab these two scripts again. Let's put it inside of the script section. All right, and this is going to be same thing. Index HTML is the root file, index HTML, and that should format. And then we needed to install our parcel bundler dependency. So npm install parcel bundler dash dash save dev and what this is going to do is install this as a dev dependency which means it's only used during development it's not actually used during a production build for example and actually i think i mistyped that this should be all lowercase separated by hyphen so let's run that full install and we'll come back in a second okay so that dependency is installed it should be in 
our dev dependency. So this is exactly the same process that we saw before. And now what I wanna show you is inside of the app.js, we've got some authentication stuff that doesn't really need to be in this specific file. This can actually go in its own separate file. So let's create a new file, auth.js. And I just deleted the previous auth.js. So let's create that file brand new. So new file, auth.js. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take all of this stuff here. So log out the update UI and the log in. I'm just gonna copy the, or uh, cut that. So copy it to my clipboard and then paste it into here. And so the only thing, let's actually just take a look really quick at what this does. When the window loads, it initializes the auth zero client. And if you're interested in identity solutions for adding authentication to your applications, auth zero is an amazing place to go for that. Um, it will check to see if the user is authenticated. If the user is authenticated, cool. If uh, there's a redirect, which means it's gone through the login process, it's OAuth2 and all these things, it will do these things and update the UI as well. Updating the UI will basically show and hide the login button. So if you're logged in, you can't log in, you can log out. If you're logged out, you can log in, but not log out. So that's what that thing does. I want to, uh, let's look inside of the index HTML. We should have two buttons here, one for... Uh, button login and button logout. I actually would rather this be login button and log out button. I like that better. And then inside of the auth.js, let's do log out button, login button. All right, so let's just reno rename those that way. So we've got all this code in a separate file. The only thing that we need to use in the app.js is the logout and the login functions. So with that, we can export them. So let's export login and then let's export the logout functions. Okay. And uh, that file is good. So now back in our app.js, we can import login and logout from the auth file. So that will get us both of those functions and if we look in the HTML file right now, notice that uh, this is referencing a function directly inside of HTML. This only works when you have uh, no build system and you've got basically just like completely global function definitions. That's not the case now that we're using a bundler. So we actually need to set these dynamically in JavaScript. So let's get rid of them in HTML. Let's come over to the uh, JavaScript and let's do, uh, let's just do a section here on auth. And I'm gonna use a snippet here to get a reference to each one of those login and logout buttons. So this will be the login button, all right? And then another snippet for logout button. If you're interested in learning how to create snippets for JavaScript or any other language, I've got a video that you can check out on uh, YouTube as well. And you can see an example here of C log will was the snippet for console log. So I'll show you in that video how to create snippets that you can use and leverage as well. The get ID one that I just used, that is one of my favorites. I love that one. And so what we wanna do is take this login button or login button, add event listener. We'll add a click event and then we'll call the login function. And then I will uh, do this a second time and change this to the logout button. So what we've got is we're setting an event listener for the login button and the logout button. And we're setting them to these two different functions that we pulled in or we imported from the auth.js file. So now at this point, I could run npm run dev and we'll actually see an error here that we'll talk about in a second. But this will start that live reloading server. I can come over to uh, my parcel demo, which is now the typing game at one, two, three, four. And you see, I get an error here for uh, regenerator runtime not defined. Turns out I'm using, inside of auth.js, I'm using async and await. If you're not familiar with that, it's a way to handle asynchronous JavaScript built on top of promises. Um, I've actually got a video that you can check out right here on promises as well, so I'll link to that video. But th those things aren't supported by default without doing one extra import inside of my JavaScript file. And so what I need to do is import Babel polyfill. Now what's interesting is watch the text down here when I save this. This is not a dependency that I have installed. So it's going, Parcel is actually gonna go out and install that dependency 
and take care of that for me. And it built the site again. Now, if I scroll back over, I can see that my login button is here. Now, remember the logic inside of AuthJS determines whether or not to show, where's the update UI, whether or not to show the login button or the logout button. So obviously if we're choosing to show the login button, that logic is working, which means our import syntax is working. And actually if I continue through this login process using Auth0, I could uh, log in with my Google account. Let's log in with my Gmail account here. It will then take me back to my page and now you see that logout is shown instead of login. So that whole process of import is working, which is really, really nice. Again, the only potential hiccup I had was if you're using async await in JavaScript, you do one extra import and then parcel takes care of pulling that thing in you or pulling that thing in for you by default. So no configuration, all you do is tell parcel what your starting file is, your index HTML file is probably it. It will then reference a JavaScript file. Your JavaScript file can then import from all of these other JavaScript files. So let's say I wanted to use SAS instead of regular CSS. SAS is a pre-compiler for CSS. So to use it, it has to go through some sort of build step to basically compile down to regular CSS. Well, Parcel takes care of that for us too. So let's say I wanted to rename this file to SCSS, make it a SAS file. Uh, then it's gonna say, hey, something doesn't look right and we'll need to restart parcel. We'll also need to tell it, hey, now that file is SCSS in the HTML file, we'll reference it as a SAS file instead of a CSS file. Let's save this. Let's now run parcel again, npm run dev. This is gonna do its build. So this is up and running again. And now if we come back to our page and refresh, notice that all the styles are still there, but now we're able to leverage SAS or SCSS instead of a regular CSS file, which is really, really cool because again, the only thing we needed to do was tell it, hey, we're now working with SAS instead of CSS. Parcel takes care of the rest. So Parcel is absolutely amazing as a zero configuration, lightning fast bundler for JavaScript that you can use in your vanilla JavaScript. So before we wrap up here, I'm curious, are you using any bundlers in your applications? Do you use a framework like React, Vue, and Angular that already have that stuff pre-configured or are you using Parcel in your setup for your JavaScript applications as well? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear what you are working on. So I wanna thank everyone for checking out this video. If you're interested in finding out more about me and the content that I produce, you can find me at James Q Quick on all social media as well as any information about my blog, content, newsletter at jamesqquick.com. I wanna thank you for checking out this video and I will see you in the next one.